What's going on everybody? This is Broken Games HDR and in this video I'm going to give you my impressions for Horizon Forbidden West, the highly anticipated sequel to the outstanding Horizon Zero Dawn which came out in 2017. So about a little less than five years later the sequel is now here. So I'm going to tell you how I feel about it, give you some pros, some issues I ran into um, and what I'm most impressed by with Horizon Forbidden West. So let's get to it. So I played about 12 hours so far. So this is kind of an early impressions and most of those 12 hours is mainly side missions. I've done a good amount of main missions, but that's mainly side missions because you know, that's how I play my games. I think it only benefits you as the gamer to not only do uh, side missions in general, but to do them first because those will help you in the actual main missions and, main, and side missions in this game are very meaningful they're useful you get weapons uh, out of them right actual uh useful tools and weapons so it only benefits you because you get you know tools weapons xp all that good stuff uh towards the the skill tree and everything like that right so that's how i play now if you like if you loved last the last horizon game you're gonna love this one everybody knows I loved the last game. I said it was the best IP of last generation. I said that then, I still feel that way now and I stand by that. So as far as you know, the pros, and I mainly have pros about this, there's only a few cons. Let me say first, I'm glad that I played, replayed Horizon Zero Dawn about a month before I came back to this game. Um, and the reason I did that is because I never played the Frozen Wilds DLC, right? So I, I decided I'm just going to beat the whole game over again and do finally do the Frozen Wilds DLC. And that's what I did. And then when I picked this game up, the muscle memory was still there because the controls, for the most part, uh, are, are the same. So it just felt like I was, you know, picking right back up, um, you know, with the story, the controls, everything felt natural. So I'm glad I did that. Now, the story setup... Um, I, they they very early on in this game they you know they set up the story the foundation of the story they don't hit you over the head uh, with it too much because I think that was a a complaint a lot of people had was that in the first Horizon game you kind of play through it then halfway sixty percent through they just hit you over the head with this exposition dump like real hard and a lot of people didn't like that i personally loved it i like when when games movies you know do that type of stuff uh when it's a situation where it's a mystery you don't necessarily know what happened before and it, then it does this grand reveal i like that type of stuff some people didn't like it i did right and what i really like about horizon's story in general is the element of artificial intelligence you know they play with this concept of artificial intelligence very heavily and it reminds me of different um uh different types of media that i like movies books uh movies like you know eagle eye i am robot terminator of course not the killer android um and and time travel part of it but the artificial intelligence aspect of it i love sci-fi movies you know, li like that. As far as Aloy goes, she shows a lot more um, personality, I feel, in this game. She's a lot more emotive, and that's another issue uh, some people had in this in the, in the first game, and I didn't necessarily find that to be a problem because she was an outcast, so it's not like she's necessarily supposed to be like this social butterfly, and they kind of touch on that in this game that she is used to being alone, you know, because she was alone the whole time she was, you know, raised and, and, and growing up, right? And and I like her personality in this game even more because she's kind of like this passive aggressive asshole, right? She's not gonna insult you directly. And, you know, of course this game gives you some dialogue choices and whatnot, but she kind of like says stuff in a very sarcastic way and uh, yeah, she's 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 she can definitely be a dickhead when when she when she wants to to people, right? And and I like that. I like that about her. Honestly, kind of reminds me of myself. You know, uh, they seem to reduce the amount of audio logs that are in the game. They're still there, but it seems like the game gives you a lot more text logs, and you know they don't beat you over the head with too many audio logs. Once again, um, and because you know lore was a big part of the Horizon Zero Dawn story, but 
they, they, you know, you could definitely argue they went overboard with the audio log, so they seem to have toned those down, toned those down, right? Because if you go into, you know, any type of, um, you know, uh, facility, underground facility in the original game, bro, there, there might be like 50 audio logs just, you know, in, in, in any given spot, right? So there's, there's new weapons uh, that you get early on. I think I got like three new weapons you know, in, in the first 10 hours, some through side missions. The animations, the mannerisms, the, and the body language of the NPCs are a lot more natural, right? The, they're so emotive. They move so lifelike and like and like real people. Um, and and the, the NPCs are so enjoyable and they're so diverse as far as their, you know, their, their characteristics and their personalities, um, their actual looks, which I'm gonna get into. Uh, in, in a little bit. Um, the side quests are a, are a treasure. They're so enjoyable to, to do. They're really good. Because, um, you know, I, I believe side quests can make or break at uh, an, an open world game, an, an RPG. They're, honestly, I would, I might argue side quests are more important than main quests, but that's that's just me. And what I like about Horizon, and, and this was, it was like this in the first game, they divide side quest and errands because errands are usually and, and because we know a lot of uh a, a lot of side quests in open world games are really just errands or fetch quests so they divide it in horizon into errands and and fetch quests and there's there's even another category and so you know when you get an errand that's pretty much go get this bring it back a side quest has deeper implications it's much more than get this and, and come right back, right? It, it, you know, sometimes it even, uh, you know, weaves itself into the main um, story, right? It's, it's relevant. It's not just, it's a side thing because you don't have to do it, but it's still important for the narrative and the story. The combat, um, especially melee attacks, much better, right? It's, it's more fluid, it's more dynamic. It complements the, the range uh, combat with your arrow, your slings and, and everything else. Uh, because the first one, in the first game, the melee combat was obviously much more stiff, it was slow. Um, Aloy in this game, in general, feels a lot more, uh, she feels lighter, for one. A little bit lighter, and she feels a little bit more agile, right? And But the machines also have been given more range options, it seems, right? Because honestly, most of the machines, no, I'm not going to say most, a good amount of the machines uh, were very were, weren't really threats because of how you could take them down um, from such from so far away and and a lot of them didn't have range options. I think they did a better job at um, at you know a, addressing that. There's more environmental puzzles um, out in the open. Um, the first first game didn't have that many puzzles. Uh, I would say Frozen Wilds actually had. Uh, more puzzles than the whole original game, I think. But those puzzles weren't even good, honestly. I kind of despise those puzzles. I don't think they were. I don't think they were uh, well designed. Um, they's, they've overhauled the skill trees. There's now s six new skill tree paths, and they pretty much Aloy still has the abilities that she would have gained in the original game. At least most of them. It's definitely not all of them, but it's most of them because it's a lot more expansive. There's a lot more things to unlock in each skill tree. They also reward you with XP a little bit faster to to uh, compensate for that because I was getting like two XP from like just really quick side missions and stuff like that. So they you know they tried to compensate for that. Um, they have this Valor Surge um, mechanic now, which is kind of like a special the special move you saw in the trailer where the camera freezes and you see uh, Aloy do this like this you know that pretty much use her ultimate and valor surges there's a there's a valor surge in each skill tree so one may be for her to do a special melee attack the other may be for her to drink this potion and that potion is is going to buff her for like 30 seconds or something like that so there's a valor surge in each in each um, skill tree, there might be actually more than one Valor Surge in each in each skill tree, um, if I'm not mistaken. I could, but but don't quote me on that. Um, so the game has two modes. Uh, it has fidelity mode and performance mode. I looked 
at fidelity mode just to see what it looks like. And I was like, hell no, there ain't no way I'm playing at this 30 FPS. I'm gonna be real with you. It didn't even look like 30 FPS to me. It looked like more like 24, but don't obviously don't quote me on that either because I'm 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 pretty sure Digital Foundry did their test and they said it runs um at a 30. But when I put my eyes on that thing and I and I moved around, I was like, oh hell no. Because I'm gonna be I, I don't think I don't think that 30 FPS in this game is the same 30 FPS that we played in in Horizon Zero Dawn. Something looked off. It just didn't look as smooth. It could be because of the pacing. And I think I've heard some people say, even though they turn motion blur off, I obviously have motion blur off. It doesn't completely seem to, to be off though, even though they turn it completely off. I don't know if that has something to do with it. Either way, if you choose, and I understand people buy these expensive TVs, you know, you buy this game, they put all the work into it. So you want to get the best, you know, visual but I don't think it's worth it. But so that's just me. I'm playing absolutely at 60. And I got to give them credit for this, man. I, I got to give, I, I got to give Gorilla their flowers. Horizon Forbidden West has the best design of black people in any game ever. There is no game that has designed black people better visually aesthetically graphically nothing this this is the king right here they did black people right right besides like there's this one character in the, well one or two character in the game in, in, in the games where like what the hell why does she have a school shooter bowl cut haircut aside from that them actually designing you know black people and getting the skin color right you know the the color of the the two-tone color of the lips just bruh, they they killed it. They killed it. Okay, so let me get to quality of life because I think the quality of life improvements are the best part and what I'm most, you know, what I'm really most impressed by. Of course, like I said, the, the visual is amazing. The stories, the story is good. The combat's highly improved, but the but the quality of life, right? So for example, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a few, a few. Allow me to name a few. So. When you go into focus and you're analyzing a an a, a enemy, a machine, to see what its weakness and just see, you know, information on it, now you can switch through machine information like it's a menu system. Just move left and right. It wasn't like that in the original game, right? Pretty much in, in the original game, you had to kind of like look at different parts of the machine to see its weakness and, and the readability of it wasn't great. It's much more, it's, it's like you're going through, it's literally like you're going through a menu system when you're analyzing these machines. Much better than the first. Also, they've simplified how health plants work. One of the dumb things I hated about the first game was you had to unlock, uh, um, unlock in the skill tree the ability to equip and unequip modifications for your weapons which is stupid right like and, and it was deep in the skill tree so pretty much if you put a modification in your weapon you couldn't you couldn't take it out i believe until i think the only way to take it out was to replace it with something else and if you replaced it with something else you would completely lose the old modification which is extremely dumb right i don't know why they put that in the skill tree uh it was just unnecessary. So I'm glad, you know, you, you get you have to keep that. You can equip and unequip mods whenever you want. So with resource pouches, to improve and upgrade your resource, resource pouches and how much things can hold, like your quiver, uh, your resources and items and everything else, now it pretty much, you can create jobs for it, right? Pretty much tasks for it like you could in the original game. But now this game also tells you the the locale the type of location where you can find this animal to upgrade your pouches so it'll say okay you need a raccoon raccoons it won't give you the exact location on the map but it'll tell you okay raccoons are located in this type of forest area or uh foxes are located here or lizards are, lo are located in in desert type areas that type of stuff is just it's small but all of these small all of these small quality of life improvements make the game so much better also, uh, you could have more weapons in your weapon wheel. Watch Weapon Wheel Podcast this Sunday, by the way. It's gonna be fire. They've also made selling to merchants a lot easier because now when you go to sell, all your items are split into sections, right? So 
before you know you might have to look at each item make sure it's easy it's okay for you to sell and you won't regret selling this item later because you might need it for crafting or anything like that now all the items that are pretty much the, pretty much their only purpose is for you to sell for money they're now all in one section so you could just sell those without worrying about anything and other items are uh, sectioned off into pretty much into their purpose right also you have a stash now in the original game if i remember correctly and even though i played this a month ago y'all know my memory is terrible sometimes there was no stash essentially your stash is where um items that you can no longer hold uh that's where they go to and in the original game if you couldn't hold something if your inventory was full you just couldn't pick it up that's it right now that's now those items will go to your stash and what's so great is when you actually go to your stash box there's a button that you could press that restocks all the resources from your stash back to your inventory so you don't have to you know individually go item by item and refill Aloy's inventory you just hit the button and they fill you right back up you know it's just an automatic automatic refill button the first game didn't have that this obviously makes things a lot easier a lot faster just great quality of life stuff the organizationally the entire menu system is just much better now with, regarding the few issues that i had with the game and i didn't have a lot i did experience some clipping you know um characters clipping into each other objects clipping into in, into each other few instances of that the underwater control is just a little bit weird to me i don't know being underwater is just a little bit awkward that could be because me personally i hate being under i hate underwater levels or any underwater experience in any game i just don't like it right so that could just be a me thing but i don't know the controls just feel a little a little off a little weird but could that could just be me um also the directional audio seems to be a little bit off i remember there was a section where it was just me and this one character and he was speaking but it sounded like his voice was coming from every direction right so he was in front of me but it sounded like he was also in back of me to my left and to my right so I was like, the, the directional audio might need a little bit of work. And now, to craft items, you have to be at a workbench. In the previous game, once again, if I remember correctly, you could pretty much craft on the fly no matter where you were. You just have to go into the menu, craft, and then that was it. I'm not sure if a workbench makes, you know, pretty much limiting crafting to the workbench makes things better i don't know exactly how that makes things better also at the workbench that's where you do your weapon upgrades your armor upgrades and things like that but i don't necessarily know why crafting is just submitted to uh subjected to being only at the, at the workbench but one thing it did do it, it improved by limit limiting it to the workbench is in the original game there was this weird stupid menu thing where if you went to your inventory, you had to go to one section to craft and then another section to to upgrade and then an, another section to like change mods or something. It was something like that. And it was just annoying. So like I said, organizationally, the game is just much better across the board. The entire game is better in every single way. I'm loving the game. They, you know, it... it feels more a lot more like a a, a full you know a, a full-fledged rpg um than the first game highly recommend it i love it i'm having a blast those are my impressions let me know what you think about the game so far if you've been playing it hit the like button uh follow me on twitter hit the notification bell so you can know anytime i upload or go live um check out weapon will podcast this sunday and uh yeah i will catch y'all on the next video peace Gamer Advantage glasses promote eye health by blocking out harmful blue lights. They are for gaming as well as everyday use. They help to reduce headaches, improve sleep, and are very comfortable. Gamer Advantage glasses are available in prescription and non-prescription, have several different frames and lenses, and are very affordable. Use the link in the description and the code BGHDR for 10% off.